1961, a year of change. John F. Kennedy is sworn in as the nation's 35th president. In Europe, the Berlin Wall in Germany is completed, becoming a symbol of the Cold War between East and West. Closer to home here in North Carolina, protests at a movie theater in Durham eventually leads to the opening of segregated movie theaters across the nation. All events, defining moments in world and national history. But here in Charlotte, all those years ago, another story one that captured the attention of the city like nothing before, gaining national attention as well. It involved a flamboyant multimillionaire, one of the city's wealthiest real estate developers, and a divorced secretary. George King Cutter was a husband, a father. He was also a man who had a taste for alcohol and women. And one of those women was Dillette Nykum. And while little is known about her, we do know she was murdered and she was Cutter's mistress. It was a huge scandal. I think it was pretty shocking for people in the city at the time. And this is the morning headline from the Charlotte Observer on Wednesday, July 5th, 1961. George Cutter held on murder charge. Well, I think he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. His father was jo John Cutter. Uh, who was pretty successful in, in textiles and uh, also construction. And so he, he was born into that family. And the victim, George Cutter, was charged with murdering Dillette Nykum. She worked with George uh, and they had an affair that lasted several years. David Aaron Moore is the best-selling author of Charlotte, Murder, Mystery and Mayhem, and has done extensive research on the Cutter murder case. Nykum was a secretary, and she and Cutter would meet at his renovated RV-style bus. And that's where police say she was murdered and where Cutter says he found her body. But Cutter didn't call the police. Instead, he took Nykum's body and put it in his car and drove it to her home here on East 7th Street, where her 15-year-old son Ricky also lived. Cutter according to his own words, as reported by the Charlotte Observer, told the boy to say he just found her here. He told him there was no reason to have a lot of notoriety over this because it would have happened anywhere. Not long after Cutter left, police were called to the home. And hours later, Cutter returned to the home and after being questioned by police, was charged with first degree murder. Prosecutors thought the evidence was clear. Cutter was guilty, or was he? During the trial, the prosecution argued Cutter and Nykum had an argument at the bus and Cutter beat her to death. But the defense argued Nykum died from acute alcoholism. Cutter took the stand in his own defense and denied he beat her or killed her. And when asked why he moved the body, he said he did so to avoid a scandal and publicity. The trial lasted less than two weeks. And after four and a half hours of deliberations, the jury came back with its verdict. He was found not guilty. And if the next question is going to be, why was he found not guilty? guilty, <sighs> wealthy male privilege of the time. <laughs> he had a strong defense team, and the evidence was all incidental. You know, I mean, there, nobody saw it happen. Dillette Nykum was 38 years old when she died. She was buried in Spartanburg, South Carolina, where she was from originally. George Cutter was 48 years old at the time. He reportedly controlled more property in Uptown Charlotte than any other real estate developer. But after the trial, he lost favor with many in Charlotte. His wife divorced him. He eventually stepped down as president of his real estate company, and he died less than five years later at the age of 53. He's buried here in this family crypt in the Elmwood Cemetery in Charlotte. You look at a lot of the violence that occurs today, it pales. But when you look at the time that it came from, it was very sensational. And uh, I think that because it involved people of, of wealth, and certainly uh, George was of notoriety, I, I think it was scandalous because of that. 63 years later, still no definitive answer. The truth is, we may never know who killed Dillette Nykum. People who played key roles in the case are no longer alive today. And as time goes on, memories fade and specific details about what happened become less clear. But what is clear is that the lives of many were deeply impacted by the events of July 4th, 1961. 
WBTV True Crime Carolina is going to continue to tell you the stories of crimes both unsolved and solved that still deserve our attention. Be sure to join us as we explore those stories on air and online. And coming soon, the WBTV True Crime Carolina's podcast. We'll have more details on that later next month.